why I think the safety team is there to protect the pastor. They're there to protect the, the flock, the lambs, the little ones that are in the nursery or in the ch children's department. They need protection and they sadly need protection from some of the workers in the church. Uh, there have been pastors both here in our area and around the country that have been arrested as a uh, child abuser, sex abuser, a pedophile, a pornography. Uh, I had one example of a church and the first church was in Charleston and the man had been a member, had been serving, working with the children for years and they got a little bit suspicious of activities, had no proof. So instead of saying anything, they moved him and put him into an area with adults, uh, took him away from the children and he got upset and he left the church over. Well, a couple of years later, he ended up in Charlotte, North Carolina. And there the church had cameras. And in every Sunday school class, there was a camera in a corner that looked at that entire classroom, uh, no bathrooms or no you know, private personal areas, but it looked at that classroom so that someone would know that they were watching, being watched. Well, the first couple of Sundays, he didn't do anything and he kind of got the lay of the land. Uh, that was mistake number one. A new person in a church should not be given permission to go work with children or even volunteer in any way until most churches, I recommend a year, uh, some maybe more if it's one particular area. Uh, others will do it in six months, but get to know something about that new member before you put them in a position of trust. Uh, second or third Sunday, this guy took a ball cap and hung it over the camera just to make sure and see if anybody paid any attention. Well, nobody came to tell him that, hey, you're blocking the camera, you need to take the cap down. So he knew then that they weren't watching the camera. The camera was there just to give an evidentiary, uh, you know, proof of something happening later. Well, he then realized the camera only covered a certain part of the classroom after he took his hat down and noticed it was moved. Well, he moved the camera a teeny bit more. Nobody ever noticed. And then he started to commit his immoral and illegal acts in the corner of the classroom that nobody could see on the camera, even if they watch. Well, once they got a report from a parent of something the child said, they went back and looked at all of this video saw that the cameras had been covered and then had been moved. Too late to prevent the abuse of the child, too late to do anything other than uh, get rid of the person. They couldn't even file charges because there was no video to show what he did. That's why the camera needs to be monitored. I worked with one local church that they have a person that sits in an office. They watch the whole service, they get to worship, but they are also watching other cameras in the building. And we encourage a church safety team should have at least one person on the outside, one person at the main entry door and every other door is locked. And if you have to have a side or a back door that's gonna be left unlocked, have a third person there. Have a fourth person in the sanctuary at least, a fifth person in the nursery children's area, and a sixth person that walks the halls. Now, some churches will say, we don't have that many people we can get to volunteer. Well, you may have to modify it and, and combine a couple of those roles, but six to eight people is an ideal team to uh, cover somebody who's sick one day and can't come or they have to work or something like that. 